believe we are live. Hello. It's been a couple days. Um, I will admit I am not feeling 100%, but I did really want to get this video out. So thanks so much for watching and welcome if you're new. Welcome back if this isn't your first video with me. So uh, today I want to talk about being a Christian military spouse. Up until now, I haven't talked very much about uh, my faith. I think I've mentioned it a couple of times in the past, but I am a Christian. I am a follower of Jesus Christ, and I, I know I'm not alone in this, but as military spouses, um, I want to talk about leaning on our faith um, as it pertains to this journey. So if you are a Christian, um, there are certain things that we do in order to develop our faith, in order to grow our faith every single day. Um, you want to read the Bible. You want to be in the Word as often as you can, renewing your mind because, you know, if not, other stuff is going to get in there. Um, everything from what we watch on TV, the music we listen to, uh, what we hear from other people on social media, in person, those things have a tendency to stay with us um, if we're not filling ourselves up with the things of God. So obviously that's important. Um, not only that, but the music we listen to, as I mentioned, um, making sure that you get worship music. Um, that way that's where your mind is focused, that you're thankful to God for all of it, for the good, for the difficult, for the bad, for being there with you uh, as you're in the thick of it as a military spouse. Um, even when things are really, really hard, it's really helpful to surround yourself with uh that atmosphere, right? Making sure that your mind is focused on him through all of it. And specifically, um, I want to talk about how those things are helpful to us. My delivery person just dropped something off. <laughs> um, how those things are helpful to us um, on this journey, right? So I talk about it all the time, how difficult it is when your spouse is away from you, um, when you're having to kind of do things alone because he has uh, long hours or he's deployed, or even if he has normal hours, but things are difficult because you're in a different situation, right? Like you're not in your hometown where you can easily rely on, excuse me, uh, your parents or your in-laws or your, um, <clears throat> Your, your close friends, right? You're having to kind of rebuild that community every single time you move every few years. But um, God's with you no matter where you go, right? We all know that. And in the process of trying to rebuild your life on this journey, it's important to maintain your faith. And I feel like I'm talking to myself right now because I have a hard time from duty station to duty station um, finding a new church. And um, in the past, like I've, I've given up looking for a new church because it's difficult. Um, like, you know, getting the kids ready early on a Sunday morning, getting everybody dressed and out the door on time. And um, it's really important. Like the word says, don't forsake the assembling of one another together. And that just that very act of getting together with other believers um, even if it's just the one day a week, it does so much to rebuild our faith and remind us like throughout the rest of the week, God's got us, right? He's there with us um, no matter how difficult it is. And it's, this isn't just a struggle journey. Like if you've had an amazing experience as a military spouse and God has blessed you with friends who are also believers and helpful neighbors and you're in a, um, a community where you feel really safe and welcome and your husband is doing really well in his job, like absolutely. Also another reason to be grateful and thankful and to pursue God with all your heart and get yourself to a church where you can uh, kind of cultivate that community for yourself and for your family. And again, I'm talking to myself, uh, especially on this particular point, um, but especially when it's hard, uh, we have a tendency because life is hard as humans, because we're fallen and because the world is fallen to kind of blame God. Like, why would you have me in this difficult situation? I thought you loved me. You created me. You have the power to change this. Why haven't you? Right? Well, um, <laughs> that's obviously, that's just our fallen nature. But 
we have the power to flip our mindset when we focus on God and whatever his purpose is for having us go through this. Maybe it's developing us um, spiritually. Maybe it's developing our character. Maybe it's helping us to become more resilient. Military spouses hate that word resilient. I always got to become resilient, but why not? I mean, if he has a plan for your life and it involves you going through difficult times, wouldn't he develop your character so that you can become stronger? And the more you see it time and time again, as you seek God to help you through each obstacle, won't you become more confident in that journey? I didn't expect to go uh, this deep on this today, but I think it's necessary because the fact is, uh, the world isn't telling us this. <laughs> um, the media is not going to tell us this. The military doesn't even really tell us this anymore. Um, you need to seek God. We need to seek God and seek godly friendships. This is not to say you cannot be friends or friendly with unbelievers. I would never advocate for that. We're supposed to be lights in this world. But um, it is important for us <clears throat> as believers to not be foolish enough to think we can do this ourselves without constantly getting new downloads from God, um, without being in the word, without surrounding ourselves with other believers, without listening to music that's going to edify us and remind us to point it all back to him. The whole reason I'm on this journey of trying to educate other military spouses and help develop them is because this is something I got from the Lord. He showed me that the reason I've learned what I've learned and been through what I've been through is so that I could turn around and help the next generation of military spouses. I say generation like I'm in my 50s, but I mean, it really is. It's a new crop of young ladies coming up and he he wants us to know that we don't have to do this alone. So um, that's really all I have to say. Just remember on this journey to seek the Lord um, and to, I don't know, to, to make sure our focus is on him. We have these lives and we get so like engrossed in what we have to do and our day-to-day -day responsibilities and what's coming up on the calendar. But the fact is, this isn't forever. And if you're a believer, you already know this. This isn't forever. This is not our our home. And while we're here, we have work that we need to do. And a lot of it um, is what we're going to get from him. So he's going to tell you what you need to do while you're here. And while he's guiding you on this journey, just continue to seek him, continue to read the word, continue to surround yourself with believers, find a good church that's going to build you up and edify you while you're on this journey and continue to pray. And that is going to do so much for you, so much more than um, the typical advice that we get about being military spouses. So I hope you found that helpful. Thanks so much for watching. Um, be sure to check the description below for my blog post on the subject and join our Facebook group, um, Mill Spouse Mastery. And I will link that down below as well. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.